Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. I'm back at London City Airport, Hoddesdon International. Nothing unusual in that in the Cessna 172. But if I jump in the cockpit you'll see something very different here with the G1000s. With the latest small avionic patch that came in at the time of recording this. This was yesterday. We've now got the ability to import our Navigraph charts into the G1000. So you can look at your airport information, for example, here at London City Airport, your departures, your stars, your arrivals, your weather, and all different kinds of things and frequencies. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get this up and running in aircraft that support the G1000. So the Cessna 172 here, the Grand Caravan and other aircraft that support the G1000. It doesn't just stop there though. If we use, go to our flight plan, we can also import our sim brief plans into the G1000 too. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this in this video. Okay, so let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with this video. So let's begin by showing you how you can link your Navigraph charts into the G1000. Now you will need an active Navigraph subscription for this to work. I did do a recent video on this asking was it worth it to resub to Navigraph. I'm going to link that down in the de description. It gives you a bit of an overview of what Navigraph can do. And with this new update, I would definitely say it's worth a monthly or yearly subscription. But you will need to have an active sub subscription for this to work. So on Navigraph.com, I'm just on the sort of home page, the product page. Well, there's a home page there, Navigraph.com. Go to your downloads option here. You should have a menu up top here. Go to downloads. And you want to down, download Navigraph Hub. Uh, in this case to my desktop PC where I'm using Microsoft Flight Sim. I've ca I don't have access to my Series S at the moment. And my flight simulator on Series S. Can someone confirm or not whether this will work on the Xbox platform? I know it works with PC. But if someone has a Navigraph subscription and you're using Xbox Microsoft Flight Sim. Can you confirm whether or not this works on the Xbox? But basically go to your downloads. Go down to Navigraph Hub and download that on your computer. I've got it downloaded already. So when this comes up. You'll get an option here to, for the Avionics plugin for the G1000. I've added that already. I'm not going to click remove, so I've added that. And there's an option here, obviously, for the G3000 and G5000 as well. So you can install that as well. I've not installed it so far. That's it. Simple steps to get it up and running. So have an active Navigraph subscription. Go to the Downloads page and download Navigraph Hub. And in Navigraph Hub, just choose this option because we're concentrating on a G1000, G1000 today. And just click Add there or Install to, while the sim's not running, by the way. So when I did this, I didn't have the sim running. Click Install while the sim's not running and then fire up the sim. So let's go to the sim now to show you this in action. So after following the previous steps of installing the Navigraph Hub and then actually linking the G1000, having the G1000 options, plugin options, in this case obviously we're in the Cessna 172, come down to your right G1000. So after you follow the previous steps, you should see a new option here called Charts. So if you click on that, I believe the first time you do this, you're going to get a screen, a message rather, from Navigraph saying go to head over to navigraph.com forward slash uh, codes and then it will give you a code to enter underneath. So go to your web browser, type that in, 
whilst you still you can still be in the sim while you're doing this, but type that in navigraph.com forward slash colds, and then type in the code, and then it will say your Navigraph account has been linked to the G1000 or to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I can't quite remember what the message gave me once I've linked it. Then if you come back to the sim, you'll see the chart depending if you're at an airport that support charts and i believe something like seven thousand airports do around the world support navigraph charts you'll see a chart of your airport so let's discuss this now let's look at this you've got things like the information of the airport you've got your departures your stars let me just go back to them in a moment you can scroll in using the range button here so mouse up and down to scroll in and out and left click and hold and you can scroll if you're scrolling you can pan around your chart isn't that fantastic whilst we're here if we go to chart options button so on this screen on the on the first screen basically info screen go to chart options and you can show things like just the header so if you wanted the ATIS information the ground frequency and the tower frequency you could show plans so you're just basically showing the airport diagram in this case just by itself profile minimums and all types of things so that I prefer it on all to show all the chart and then just go back on that to get back to this screen and you've got things like well let's go through these now you've got your info chart of the airport you're at you've got your departure charts and you've got a departure chart there so that would be this departure we can scroll in on that a little bit but say you want if you wanted a different departure chart just right click on this smaller knob use your bigger knob just to scroll down to this so this is flashing and then use that smaller knob again I'm going to mouse up in this case to choose a different departure and click enter and it'll bring up a different departure there you go just right click on that smaller knob again to stop that flashing you've got your stars and you can do the same thing there approach and weather charts and let's just go back to the first one now whilst we're on that first one if you go to your menu button on your G1000 left click that and basically show departure page or arrival page that was what I just showed you with these buttons down here but if we go use your bigger knob just to scroll up in this case you can either show your aircraft position on the chart which I'm showing you here or hide position so press your enter button it will hide your aircraft from the chart let's go to menu again I prefer to show my main aircraft on the charts isn't that neat if we go to that menu button again there is another thing I want to show you you've got the chart setup page so click the enter button there this doesn't seem to work I don't know if it's implemented maybe I'm missing a trick but there's no difference be for me between full screen and if I press enter it doesn't seem to do anything and full screen off I would expect the full screen mode to show this chart right across the screen. I can't get that to work. Maybe I'm missing a trick, a bit of homework for you chaps. If you found a way around that, please let me know. Use that bigger knob to scroll down to the colour scheme. You can choose between day and night. So you've got different colour schemes. I do prefer the day colour scheme. So you can change that and just use that right knob to get rid of that menu. So there you go, a couple of options. Now, something else here you can do whilst we're in this mode. Well, let's show you. I'm going to right click to start the flashing on our airport. And of course, you can choose a different airport here. So let's go to Heathrow, EGLL. Oops, EGLL. <laughs> Heathrow should come up. Click that keyboard entry off again. It'll show, the, show me now the Heathrow charts. So the departure charts to Heathrow. And you can change which departure you want, of course, here. So let's choose that one uh, your stars and again you can change that which star you want there there we go let's choose the big star and arrival but if we go to if info chart again on Heathrow if we right click that outer knob the smaller knob there or is that the inner knob I know it's a smaller knob and just scroll using the bigger knob down to frequencies you get all the different oops 
Now, let me get back to frequencies there. Let's try that again. Frequencies, use that big knob. There you go, to scroll between all the different frequencies. So if you want to tune into one of the ILSs there, there you go, you can do that straight from here. Back at London City here, it doesn't matter. But London City, so the ILS obviously for each runway is 111.150, that's correct. And if you actually click on that, watch this nav one. So if I click enter there, it will enter it straight into my nav one. Let's put it as my standby. So, but it's quite easy to make that active. There you go. And then the identifier will come up. So I've got my top toolbar on, but my identifier will come up next to it as well. Isn't that neat? I think that's fantastic. Right click to stop that flashing. But it doesn't stop there. Whilst we're on this screen, if you just, so nothing's flashing here. If we use that bigger knob, we could scroll between the map. Scroll between the different airport waypoint information there. But let's just put it back on the air, airport information. You've got on the flight plan. Let me show you this one first. You've got... So we're in flight plan. Using that big enough. So nothing's flashing. Just using the big enough. Basically, this is typically on active flight plan. So if you click your flight plan button, as you all know, that's typically the screen you get. Whilst we're on that screen on the flight plan, we can now go to flight plan catalogue. So that's there now. And I've set up a route in Simbrief. I'll show you on screen quickly. Simple route from London City Airport over to Birmingham Airport. So there you go. Let's take that off screen. So that's what this is. So while you're under, once again, flight plan, using the bigger knob to scroll there. Use your smaller knob, smaller knob to scroll down to flight plan catalogue. Now... I can right click that first one, that's the sim brief plan I've set up. If I click activate there, it will say activate sim brief flight plan. <laughs> My goodness, click your enter button. That flight plan I set up in sim brief, let's move that flight plan out of the way now, is now set up on our world map. You may have to do some uh, jiggery pokery to get it looking correct. But there you go, pretty much the flight plan I set up on sim brief is now set up on our world map. I can scroll there just to show you. So there you go. Isn't that a neat trick? Sticking with that bottom, uh, with that bottom, sorry, when nothing's flashing on screen, I'm going to put it back to the default map. So this is the default map you normally get. Using that smaller knob, I can go down to IFR VFR charts. Oops, IFR VFR charts. And look, we've now got IFR and VFR charts in the sim. And you can just range around here without doing any sort of a left clicking and right clicking to see different IFR VFR charts around the world, in this case, around Europe. Isn't that brilliant? So you've got all those options. Let's choose. Let's put that back to navigation maps. So that's our default map. And let's go to charts again to bring up the charts. Well, listen, there you go, chaps. I'm going to leave you to discover the rest. I think that's an excellent inclusion. So if you've got a Navigrab subscription, do give this a try and import your sim brief plans straight in. Let's show you that again. Your sim brief plans straight in. And we click that and activate. And yes, we'll load that straight into your G1000s with this new avionics updates. Well, listen, do give that a try, especially if you have a Navigraph subscription, and do let me know if it works on Xbox. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, many more of these types of videos on their way, and I'll be seeing you soon.